said, uh, announced that they would not accept the Hague sovereignty arbitration. And uh, they mentioned this as uh, uh, announced by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, that they will not participate. In fact, on the eve of the ruling of uh, the arbitral tribunal, China deployed a bomber to bus the area uh, over Scarborough Shoal within our exclusive economic zone. And uh, this was uh, the signal, uh, this, you can see the H66K bomber there, and the feature below is Scarborough Shoal uh, inside our exclusive economic zone, very close to San Banes. And apparently, China was trying to bully us uh, with this uh, strong message of sending, unnecessarily, if you ask me, and uh, a case of uh, an overreaction sending no less than a nuclear-capable strategic bomber. World leaders reacted in favor of the South China Sea ruling by the arbitral tribunal. Of course, from the Philippines, United States, Australia, uh, a message from New Zealand, from Japan, from India, from Vietnam, and many other countries supported the ruling of the arbitral tribunal. A few days after, our president announced a shift in Philippine foreign policy and signaled that there's going to be a shift in the U.S.-Philippine military alliance. And the president also announced that uh, he was initiating some defense deals with China and Russia, and at that point already in the pipeline. And he also announced that he was going to forge closer ties with China and Russia. Of course, if you ask me, I welcome this because it's very important for the Philippines to have uh, good relations with all the major countries, whether economic, uh, geopolitical, or uh, diplomatic. The president also announced that the 2016 Philippine-U.S. War Games would be the last this was his announcement. However, uh, right after that, uh, the ministry, our Department of Foreign Affairs, made a clarification that the Philippines would continue to respect our military pact with Washington. So there was this announcement from the president, followed immediately by a clarification that the pact would continue. In October, September, late September, the, uh, the president proceeded to China accompanied by several businessmen, and came back with a package of $24 billion representing credits, loans, and projects, and some grants to help us in our economic development. I just would like to interject, and I'm going to discuss it later, that uh, the reclamation projects of China caused massive destruction of coral reefs in the South China Sea, some of which is inside our exclusive economic zone. In fact, a noted and renowned uh, marine biologist, Professor John McManus, said that uh, what happened in the South China Sea constitutes the quickest rate of permanent loss of coral reef area in human history. Coral reef destruction translates into destruction also of fishery resources. Now, let's talk about Scarborough Shoal. Scarborough Shoal, as I announced earlier, has been uh, grabbed by China in 2012. What is the significance of Scarborough Shoal? The Scarborough Shoal, as you can see from uh, this picture here, is very close to Zambales, only about 130 nautical miles from Zambales, and very far from Hainan, maybe about 700 or more nautical miles from uh, Hainan, very close to Luzon and very close to our strategic uh, vital installations. Mr. Brief is somewhere here. And we found out that China has a master plan for Scarborough Shoal. And given that opportunity, this is what they plan to do in Scarborough Shoal, to build runways, buildings, all kinds of facilities. There's a natural channel here where frigates and destroyers can go in, and with a little dredging, they can convert this into a large harbor. 
to accommodate uh, many ships and uh, energy facilities, communication facilities. The importance of Scarborough Shoal is related to the concept of uh, a strategic triangle. <clears throat> this is the strategic triangle. What is a strategic triangle? It is a triangle consisting of three points. The first point is the Paracels, already built up. The second point is the cluster of artificial islands in the Spratlys, almost complete and uh, ready to receive more deployment of weapons. And the third point of the strategic triangle would be Scarborough Shoal, controlled by China, grabbed by China in 2012, well within our exclusive economic zone, and if not stopped, will convert that into a similar military installation. This is the strategic uh, triangle. What would happen here is that if they succeed, in building the structure in Scarborough Shoal, they would complete the strategic triangle and will give China full control of the South China Sea, which is going to be a threat to the national security of the Philippines and the security of our allies in the Asia Pacific region. Not just allies, but uh, various other countries that are using the South China Sea. And uh, I'd like to insert here also a geopolitical situation of the so-called Malacca dilemma. This is very important to China because China is here. Their oil flow comes from the Persian Gulf and uh, the whole of Africa area transiting through the Indian Ocean and uh, through the Malacca Strait. This is what you call the Malacca Dilemma because 80% of China's crude oil imports transit through the Straits of Malacca and that area can be easily blockaded and interdicted and that would, be, that would put in jeopardy the economy as well as the security of China. Now let's look at the status of the China-controlled islands and artificial islands in the South China Sea. The artificial islands are here. The big ones are Subi Reef, Mischief Reef uh, inside our exclusive economic zone, and then uh, Pirate Cross Reef. These are the large areas. And those areas uh, have been developed already. Many of them, the, the three islands, uh, Mischief Reef, Pirate Cross Reef and Subi Reef have each of uh, which has a three kilometer runway that can accommodate practically all the aircraft in the inventory of China. And they have early warning radars. Uh, some of them have uh, surface to air missiles in Woody Island, early warning radar, lighthouse, etc. etc. I'll talk more about that uh, later. Pirate Cross, Pirate Cross Reef, a little outside the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines. This was how it looked, 100% submerged in 2014. But after a frenetic uh, construction activity, this is how it looks now, Pirate Cross Reef, with runways and other facilities, radars, buildings, and uh, the Pirate Cross Reef has been visited by uh, uh, all sorts of uh, ships, Coast Guard ships, and naval ships from uh, China. This is a uh, pirate cross reef seen from above. You know, the first time I saw the artist sketch of uh, pirate cross reef, this was 2012, 2013, I could not believe the design because I thought it was only fiction because I could not believe at that time that uh, they could construct something like this in the middle of the ocean. That's a fire cross reef there with a big harbor. That's a big harbor and a small harbor on the side and a lot of facilities plus uh, the three kilometer runway. We see brief inside our exclusive economic zone. This is the original feature of this brief. 100% submerged 
I mentioned already that in 1995, they uh, constructed what they call a temporary fisherman shelter. Five years after, they converted that into a permanent concrete shelter. And now this is how it looks like. This is the biggest structure. Look at all the facilities there, the three kilometer runway, all sorts of buildings, radars, arbors, etc., etc. Uh, they have uh, uh, all sorts of warships and coast guard ships, about 15 of them regularly visiting the area. And this is how it uh, looks like uh, the, the runway, the south of the ships, uh, and the facilities that they have. Mission Creek may look small viewed from above, but the total area of Mission Creek is 558 hectares. You have visited our Bonifacio Global City, I'm sure. I'm talking to the, uh, our foreign guests here, I'm sure every one of you. The Bonifacio Global City is only 250 hectares. Mission Creek is 558 hectares, more than double. It is bigger than Camp Aguinaldo, Camp Crame, and Villamor combined. That is how big Mission Creek is. So believe it's a little outside our exclusive economic zone. That's the original uh, feature. But it's very close to our biggest island in the Kalayan Island Group, Park Asa. This is how it looks now. Ships visit that also. They have a one kilometer, a three kilometer runway. And this is a close up of what they have in uh, Subi Reef. And this is how Subi Reef looks like. Viewed from uh, Pakasa Island, our Pakasa Island in the Kalayan Island Group. It is almost like looking at the skyline of uh, Manila if you're entering Manila Bay. Of course, there are other small ones, views, etc., etc. And this is how the relative structures look like now. Ituaba used to be the biggest, controlled by Taiwan. This is our Pakasa. This is Fire Cross Reef. And Mr. Prip is uh, almost twice bigger than uh, Fire Cross Reef. This is an artificial island. This is a natural feature. And the president last year uh, volunteered to speak for the ASEAN because uh, there was there were some concerns about the plan of China talks about the militarization of uh, the South China Sea features. In 2015, President Xi assured President Obama that China would not militarize the South China Sea. In 2016, in a meeting with uh, President Trump, President Xi also reiterated that China was not planning to militarize the South China Sea artificial islands. And in November, during the APEC meeting in Vietnam, President Duterte reported that President Xi assured him that China would not militarize the South China Sea artificial islands. That was the assurance. Of course, a lot of people were very worried about that, uh, concerned about the possibility of fighter planes being deployed in those artificial islands. Uh, I'm going to talk about that some more. And if a J-11 fighter would be deployed in uh, Missy Free, uh, for example, right there. The radius of a J-11 fighter, which is the equivalent of the Sukhoi 27 of uh, Russia, will encompass the entire Philippines, the entire Borneo, and the entire Malaysia. In other words, uh, a security threat to the countries mentioned. And also uh, get a lot of people worried about the possibility that China would announce an air defense identification zone in the South China Sea, similar to what they did in the East China Sea when they announced an ADIC sometime in uh, 2013. Now, why do I believe the new Chinese structures in the South China Sea constitute a serious security threat? to the Philippines. This was something that I mentioned. Even before uh, all these talks about long-range missiles that I will discuss later, China's recent activities in Firecross, Subi, and the Supreme are alarming to both US and Australia. 
both you as a student, the experience.